my favorite guy of all of Vince's minions was Gorilla Monsoon. He was always nice to me. And he always tried to elevate me, help me. And even when he did the announcing, he always put me over, you know, and it was, it was very noticeable. And I really, really liked him. And I liked his son. And they're both, they're both gone now, one for bad driving and one for diabetes. So <clears throat> anyway, they were very nice people. Okay, here's the story. And I'll tell you what, it, it hurts me to say it for several reasons. Gorilla Monsoon, Gino Morella, he comes and says, Leap and Lanny, where are you? And he grabs me and takes me to his side and he says, I just had a TV um, production meeting. Don't make a monkey out of me. I said, I would never make a monkey out of a gorilla. What'd you do? And he says, I recommended you for a very important thing, but I want to know, can you do it? I said, I'll do anything you want. What do you want? He says, you ever done a blade job? And I went, oh, <laughs> I said, no. oh, I said, sure. Yes. I said, I worked in Tennessee. How many you done? I done about 30. I told him 300. Is that a lie? Eh, it's stretching the truth just slightly, times 10. Yeah, I put a zero on it. This is what men do. Yeah, I put a zero on it. <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, it was a knee-jerk reaction. You know, I had to tell a lie. 30 doesn't sound like a, like you're a veteran. 300, it sounds like, yeah, this guy's Captain Lou Albano. <laughs> okay, Right. <laughs> you know, like Abdullah the Butcher. Or, yeah, oh yeah. Well, that forehead's a mess. Oh my God. So anyway... He says, Andre was the biggest star of the 70s. And, you know, he's still a big star, but he's a baby face. We got him with Heenan, but he's going to have to draw 93,000 people and be a serious villain. We need a sacrificial lamb. And I chose you because I saw your name on the list. And I said, Leaping Lanny is the man for this job. And naturally, he buttered me up a little. He says, are you willing and are you able to do this for Andre the Giant? And I said, Gorilla, you came to the right place. I am the man for the job. I will be your sacrificial lamb. Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, uh, this is NBC. I was in a dark match, you know. So they put me in the battle royal. Now, a lot of people have asked me about this before us recording. And it was about this battle royal, which you're about to share a story for at the Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit in 87. Now, Andre, this was his first night when he was playing a heel on television. He caught you on the bridge of the nose with a headbutt, which, you know, many thought required stitches to close the wound. Now, what people think was that this behemoth of a man opened you up the hard way. Tell us what really happened. This is the genius cast. And we're going to cast away any negativity or falsehoods, okay? Right. I always tell the truth, even when I lie. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be on a dark match. I am not happy about it. I didn't, when I was a boy, dreaming of being a wrestling star, I didn't dream about being on a dark match. A dark match is for the TV people to practice their focus and the lighting people to practice their lighting and the sound man to practice his sound. And if there's any problems, they're going to fix them before the real show goes on. I would have rather been on the real show. Yeah. Can you dig it? Are yeah. you with me? So so Monsoon told you that you were going to do this. You were going to be the sacrificial lamb. So where did it go from there? Monsoon tells me I'm going to be the sacrificial lamb. No, it wasn't a hard way. And the headbutt, you could not feel it. I could not feel the headbutt. It was like he touched my epidermis without touching my dermis. And definitely didn't bother my skull or the bridge of my nose or anything. Here's what I did. First of all, besides the moral dilemma of, you know, mutilization of your own self, um, I also didn't like doing it because when I was a fan, I could always see people scratching their heads. Uh, sometimes they would put tape on their finger and scratch their head. Well, you think they're getting away with it? I was looking right at you. I knew when the blood was coming and I knew who got it and when. So for many reasons, I didn't want to do it. But don't forget, you're talking to a genius here. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking it over. And I said, well, you, you know, one of my favorite shows is uh, Breaking Bad. Great show. 
yeah, you know, hiding in plain sight. Of course, Breaking Bad wasn't a, wasn't a show then, so I'm just explaining myself. What am I going to do? I take a big blade, a regular, you know, that you put in your Gillette. They don't, I don't ever see them anymore. I taped everything except the four corners of the blade. Then I put the blade in my mouth. And then I was able to get it and put it back. Get it and put it back. What I was supposed to do is take a headbutt from Andre, blade myself, have him throw me over the rope, and I get carried out. That was the deal. I didn't do it. I cheated. And I'm going to tell you how. I stood in the middle of the ring all by myself, and I cut the supratrochlear vein, which is also known as the frontal vein if you're not a genius. And it runs from the bridge of the nose up, directly up vertically, and then forks off into the scalp. Now, repeat after me, supratrochlear. Supratrochlear. There you go. It's the super, supratrochlear vein. In the genius cast, you have to learn stuff, okay? That's part of the deal. Say after me. <laughs> so I, what I did is I, I grabbed the, I took the blade out of my mouth, stood in the middle of the ring because I thought by hiding in plain sight, with all that talent around me, nobody be looking at me in the middle of the ring. Everybody be looking in the hard camera, but only see the people in the foreground. Okay. So no matter which camera was on, you couldn't see me doing this. And if you did, or if the camera caught me, I believe in a thing called post-production editing. This was not live. It was taped. And if, if I had done a mistake or something, you know, no big deal, right? They just cut it. Patch it up and cut again. Yeah. So, so I took the blade out and I took my left hand and I pressed it against my skull and I cut the supratrochlear vein or frontal vein if you're not a genius or if you're not ostentatious or if you're not um, pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> showing off now. I'm showing off. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'm not a real doctor, but I played one on television. <laughs> I'm not a real genius, but I played one on television. Right. Well, right. Vince McMahon came up to me and said, hello, pal. And he gave me that bullshit, you know, like he's my friend. He says, you're going to do it for us, right? I said, yes, sir. And um, then Dick Ebersaw, who was the number one guy at NBC Sports, said, Lanny, he says, we've never had blood on NBC. Please bleed well for us. And I said, yes, sir, you've come to the right man. I'll do my best. And, you know, they had me all buttered up and pumped up and everything. So I took my left hand and I forced it against my head and went, boom, right on the super trochlear. And it went nuts. It, I, I knew I had enough. So then I took the blade, put it back in my mouth, walked up to Andre, and I said, Andre, I'm ready. He says, okay, boss. And he grabs me by the hair and he gives me a headbutt. Except you couldn't feel it because he was good. Yeah. He, he was really good. And it looked real. And he knew how to do it. Anybody that had a preconceived notion of thinking that, you know, he broke my nose or something. No, come on. Showbiz, baby. So, boom. And then he holds me again. And then he throws me over the top rope. And I took a bump. And I was immediately bleeding when the camera finally saw me. And everybody said, when did you get the blood? Where did you get the blood? Where did the blood come from? Nobody, nobody knew. And I didn't tell anybody until now. Now, you put the razor in your mouth. And, you know, you're not the only one who's done this. A lot of wrestlers have used that tactic in the ring. Were you nervous having it in there? Like, like you take a wrong bump, you know, you cut yourself on the inside. I'd be more nervous with the blade on my finger, first of all. Why are you wearing tape on your finger? Yeah. Um, Randy always wore tape on his finger. That way, no, whenever, he, whenever he would do it, you know, well, he always wears tape on his finger instead of just, you get the picture yeah. since he always, but see, I never wore tape on my finger. So I put it in my mouth. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you the rest of the story. Sure. You know, Paul Harvey? No, <laughs> right? I don't. Well, he's the biggest deal in radio, but he's been, you're too young to know this. Okay. <laughs> I want you to, everybody who's young, Google Paul Harvey. He was the greatest. He was the Oh, this is Paul Harvey. Good day. 
time for news. And after the rest of the story, anyway, he was one of the all-time greatest. Otherwise, here's what bothers me. Are you ready? Sure. Here's the part of the story that I didn't like. Did you ever meet a girl? You ask her out. She goes out. You do everything from A to Z. And then you don't call her. And it breaks her heart. You know, stuff like that happens every day. Well, it was usually the other way around for me. <laughs> Go on a date. She wouldn't call me back. Either way, somebody gets hurt. Now I know how it feels. Yeah. Now I'm going to tell you the rest of the story. I can't stop the bleeding. They carry me out, you know, and everything. And so my brother, Macho Man, you know, Rick Martel, Rene Goulet, and me are, you know, we've got a towel. I got a towel pressed against my head and they're helping me. Nobody else is even interested in me. Okay. These are my friends. Now I, now I know who my friends are. Right. My friends are Rick Martel, my brother, Rene Goulet, and myself. That's the only friends I've got now. Everybody else, Dick Ebersaw is busy. Vince McMahon is busy. Everybody's busy. Nobody cares about the fact that I'm bleeding to death in the dressing room because I cut the supratrochlear vein, which is a hell of a vein, okay? It's the best vein you got. And I sliced it hard, okay? So I have to, I'll tell you what, no one cared. Nobody cared. And when it was all over, nobody thanked me either. You know, what was my big thank you? They announced the card for WrestleMania 3 and yours truly was not on the card. How do you like that? So, Ugh. that's okay. I still have my wife, I still have my daughter, and I still have my job. But no fucking thank you? Are you out of your mind? So, this was a big effort I made. I cut the supratrochlear vein and I didn't get a fucking card. Oh, yeah!